Okay, so I had three things I worked on this week. Um, the, f- the least for the resolution change took. Yeah, but took. Okay. Uh, the least successful thing was the ActiveMQ upgrade. I found some incompatibilities in the uh, spring dependencies for a couple bundles that prevented the active MQ from working with Spring 4.0 or above. So uh, we're gonna have to wait for we're gonna have to either rebuild a couple dependencies or wait for people to merge pull requests in active MQ to get that to work. Um, so that didn't happen this week. Um, I've also been working on trying to get our REST web app to run in Apache CXF instead of uh, instead of Jersey because I found some search features in uh, CXF that were supported that uh, looked like they would be really useful for things like uh, programming Angular UIs in the web app um, against our REST interfaces. So I got that I got that basically working with the latest version of CXF. Um, so CXF is all spring based. This is the spring, the guts of the spring context that CXF uses to initialize. Um, there were a couple hacks and workarounds I had to do, but this is what I ended up with. Um, it supports extension maps, so if you do like node slash one dot JSON, you'll get the JSON format, one dot XML, you'll get the XML format. Um, and then there's a concept in JAXRS of providers, which are basically like plugins that do things to the, either to the content of the uh, REST stream or uh, one thing that they've added in CXF that I wanted was the ability to inject what they call a search context, and I'll go over what that means. Um, so these are just like Jaxby parsers that parse the output. We have like some tests that assume that our Jaxby is slightly malformed in some cases, like we're missing namespaces. So we have our own Jaxby provider that I put in higher up than the regular Jaxby one. Um, but yeah, the search context is what I really wanted to have work in here. So a search context is what they call a context variable that So this is the node rest service using the new CXF code. And so for the get method that returns all nodes, um, I end up with two parameters here. The URI info, which is familiar from the old rest code. It's basically just all the information about the URI, query parameters, method, and all that stuff. Uh, the new thing here is uh, CXF is inserting, a, giving us the ability to insert a search context here. So let's see. We get the query parameters. Uh, is that search context standard? Is that from JXP or is that CXF um, extension? I think yeah. It looks like it's a CXF specific thing. Um, I'm not sure if it would get worked back into the JAXRS standard. Do we want to tie ourselves to that? Um, we'll get one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't, uh, the alternative is writing your whole own search provider, which I wanted to avoid doing since CXF already had this this pattern built into there. They can inject this as a context variable. Um, but anyway, what you have to do here is you basically say, uh, touch the context, the type that I'm serving in this REST interface, and then you just declare a visitor that converts, there's basically like a, a tree type data structure and you visit the tree and we convert that into one of our own uh, OpenMS criteria builders, uh, Ben's API for building up Hibernate queries. Well, they get translated to Hibernate right before they're executed. So you just uh, accept that visitor on the search condition and then and then we, all, we still use the same query for parameters for limited offset order by an order that we used to, which are kind of ad hoc standard, I would say, for our REST interface. And then, yeah, then you basically just execute the query against the DAO. And we'll do some examples of what the Fickle searches look like. Um, so Fickle can basically can query on any type of any property value that you're exposing through joins on the criteria, so any sub-object of node. Um, so right here we've got, uh, this is fickle syntax for like label equals and then stars function as wildcards. So this would translate to a criteria like statement. 
uh, with like percent at the front, percent at the end. Um, and let's see. And here we're querying like a, a, a sub, like a joined in, the joined in asset record on the node. We can filter by, uh, you know, you could fil filter by any asset field this way. Um, and then lastly, you can also support the semicolon is an and uh, in Fickle. So this is just kind of a dummy statement that uh, tests that I have a node label ending in two and an asset record ID equal to two in the same node. And then you can do parenthetical statements uh, and semicolons and and comma is an or. So this would match any any node ending with a label ending in two or a label ending in one. And let's see, I can run the test to show what that looks like. I think this would qualify as an integration test. Working with DJs, I think this was about 50 spring contexts. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. If you start with spring context, you get an integration test. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did it do here? Um, skip back. The last query is probably the most interesting one. Uh, it doesn't actually show me, I don't think, in these logs, the actual query parameters. But you can see it's it's got a like restriction of percent two and equal restriction of asset ID two. And it's not the last one. Can you show the code of the chapter here the time? Yeah. Okay, actually this is the one I wanted to show you. It's like of two equal two, and then it's anding that together. It's anding those together and combining them with a, a like restriction of node ending in one. If you look at this query, that's its interpretation of what this this query is. So the yeah, the criteria builder visitor thing is uh, it's, it's been around for a while, man. It's what? It's been around for a while now, like one twelve maybe. Yeah, it's been around. What for a while. the the criteria builder? Oh yeah, yeah. The criteria builder has been around for a long time. It's basically the standard for if you're constructing any type of any type of complicated query, I've, everybody should be using Criteria Builder to do that. And you just do Criteria Builder, you find up to, uh, like in here we say, we tell it join paths through aliases here. It's basically like a version of Hibernate's criteria stuff, but it doesn't rely on sessions. So you can kind of make an abstract criteria and then serialize it to a Hibernate query, essentially. Yeah. You render it to a Hibernate query and execute it. Because yeah. we, had, we had a lot of problems with Hibernate sessions crossing code boundaries and weird, weird session issues in the browser and things like that. And this was, this was one way to solve that. And it also lets us hopefully eventually use other things than just straight Hibernate criterias. Yeah, we could we could write a. I think Ben has his own visitor that visits the criteria builder and then ends up with either a Hibernate criteria. We could potentially in the future write a JPA one. You know, if it's not exactly the yeah. same. Or we could turn it into HQL instead of turning it into actual criteria objects or yeah. you know yeah, something exactly. else. It's kind of it's impl an implementation, non-specific version of the criteria. Builder. Um, yeah, this the builder the builder here that converts everything is pretty simple. Um, so yeah, that I'm looking forward to being able to use this as a more like a richer query language uh, for some of the meaning stuff I'm trying to do. Um, so that's basically the fickle UI. I haven't really tested it with any other objects yet, so I just just now got this done this morning. Uh, the only other thing I worked on this week that's been on my branch for a week or two is that I think is almost is done is uh, the monitoring locations XML that was used for remote pollers. All of that data will be moved into the database. Um, so I wrote a migration script that'll run that'll parse the XML and pump it all in four tables. There's a monitoring locations table, and then there's mapped uh, string lists in for polling packages, collection packages, and tags, uh, which are you. So now you can do like a one-to-many relationship between a location and the polling packages that, are, that it is responsible for. Before we just had a single polling package you could specify. 
So I think, for instance, for Papa John's, maybe they had to have like 4,000 different polling packages and they might be able to get away with, you know, a much smaller number now, hopefully. Um, let's see, I can kind of show you what the tables look like. Let's test. Let's migrate all this stuff in and you test. So yeah, this is basically the, the same as the old XML format. I separated latitude and longitude into two columns, um, but otherwise it's the same data structure so far. So uh, I want to get a UI around this. You don't have to, before you had to basically keep, you had to maintain your own copy or the copy of the XML files through text editing. So I want to make a UI around this so it's easy, A, for people to view the information and add locations uh, and map them to the config objects, but also at some point I want to be able, I want for the minion and remote polar devices to add themselves using a REST interface, like to be able to define their own locations, um, which I think will be critical if you're setting up, like if you're on site setting up a minion, you don't want to have to like, have to be able to log back into OpenNMS to get the thing connected correctly. Um, we should be able to do all that over REST from like a really simple minion UI. If it even needs to be a UI, you can probably just edit a config file that says, I want my location to be this. And when it starts up on the open and mess side, it'll say, oh, that location doesn't exist yet. Just create it. Part of the registration. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's about all I got done this week. The, uh, the database, the monitoring location stuff is basically done. It'll probably be merged next week. And the CXF stuff, I want to kind of hammer on it a little bit more and make sure there's nothing, that we're not losing any features versus Jersey. I wish there was a way that was it would be easier to switch back and forth between CXF and Jersey. And I did, did some work to make the, the, the JAX RS annotations a little bit more uh, implementation independent. And it would probably improve the thread safety in some of the rest stuff also. But um, I haven't tried switching back to Jersey yet, but it should be pretty easy. It should be easier than it was for me to switch to CXF now. Um, so just to be clear, so your intention is, is this in the develop branch? Or you yeah. Mm -hmm. so not well, yet. it's the branch off of the develop. Yeah. But you'll move to patch of CXF, a Jersey library is a little good. Yeah, I think, I think we'll move to CXF because uh, CXF in the long term would be easier to run in crap, I think. They've got crap features. Well, it's also part of service mix. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so our, it'll be in 17. Yeah. Yes. But our, our actual service code, besides the search context stuff that uh, Craig mentioned, it's it's standard JAX RS annotations. So uh, I didn't have to change any code to get it to work with CXF, really. It was more just like putting annotations in different spots so that it was compatible with the way CXF was interpreting stuff, but it, it, now it should be at a kind of a level playing field between Jersey and CXF. So is the CXF connotation stuff added? Do you know if that's been put into a JSON or is it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about the search context stuff. Um, the only thing, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, so the output from, from the REST service is the same? Yeah, it should be exactly the same format. Like all the, I didn't change a single line of the unit tests, okay. so. And it's all passing. Yeah, all the unit tests are working, so. To be fair, the unit tests are pretty slim. Exactly, yeah, that's one thing I'm, I think I might do next week is I might go back to 16 and run coverage on the unit tests and then make them cover more and then merge those changes ahead and make sure it still works. Because, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think too, I haven't looked at 
how much of the rest stuff we could replace with like fickle search, but uh, if I do any drastic changes to the REST services themselves, we're thinking about making like a REST2 interface that is just the next version of the REST UI. Um, and, and we'll just leave the current REST code exactly like it is and just basically freeze that as the, the last version of that interface. So, uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks.